book is on the energy transition, and why is that such an important topic right now? Well, the the energy transition um, is, or the great transition, as the book is called, is is about the shift from coal and oil to solar and wind. And at first, it seems kind of far out. I mean, solar and wind to run the economy. We can do it now, and. Uh, uh, the exciting thing is that the cost of rooftop solar panels to go on, on your house um, has dropped to the point where, in all probability, you can get cheaper electricity from those panels than you can get from the local utility. And this is creating an interesting situation because as utilities lose customers because the customers put these panels on their roofs, their market shrinks but their, their costs remain essentially the same. They have to maintain the grid and, you know, and, and okay. so it's, it's for utilities, it's called the, the, the death spiral has been the coin, the, 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 the term that's uh, sort of been coined. Um, but the exciting thing is the, the change in geography of the energy economy throughout our lifetimes. Um, you know, our oil came from halfway around the world, from Saudi Arabia or someplace. Our mm -hmm. energy came from halfway around the world. And the idea that you can get it from 10 feet above your head, you know, that's, that's a big change. But that's where we are now. And uh, uh, we're, going to see a, uh, we're going to see a half century of, half century of change in the next decade wow. as, as the market drives this transition to solar and wind energy. Okay. So so are you seeing like a 100% solar and wind energy or kind of what's the balance in say a 10 year time frame or by Well, we're, we're looking or? at solar's going to lead because everyone has a rooftop. Not everyone has space for a, a wind turbine. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no little wind turbines that are economic that you put on your your roof. So wind turbines work where you have a lot of space, like the U.S. Midwest or Great Plains. Or, and uh, the, the biggest uh, wind project in the world right now is in China. Um, China, uh, in China, wind electric generation has overtaken nuclear. And it not only has overtaken it, it's literally blown by it. I mean, if you were to graph uh, nuclear power generation in China and wind, wind would go like this. Um, so the, China is now leading the world with, with wind and the idea that it has already overtaken nuclear, it's just a matter of time until mm -hmm. it begins to compete directly and to shrink coal and, uh, and, and oil. Um, so it's, it's an exciting development and it, um, I mean the economics are there and, it's, and because it's market driven it, it's happening pretty fast, and, and you don't have to have a lot of government involvement in this. I mean, government just needs to step back and let the market take care of it because it's doing such a good job. Um, so, so this is this is what's new and exciting in the in the world energy economy. And it, I mean, we've had energy trans transitions before. We went from coal, went from wood to coal. That was a few centuries, and coal to oil, and then and coal and oil. Um, and now it's from coal and oil to solar and wind. Um, and the interesting thing is that when you, in the old energy system, when you use some coal or, or pump some oil, you know, your resource shrunk. But with solar and wind, how much you use today has no effect on the availability tomorrow. So it's basically an infinite source. And doesn't, can you say a little bit about like resources and will the mix solar and wind be different in different parts of the globe and are there other sources such as geothermal or ocean waves? Yeah, uh, there, there are other sources, um, but solar and wind are going to dominate. They're going to be the big two, the way coal and oil were the big two in the, in the old energy economy. I mean, some countries like Denmark already have gotten you know, like 43% of their electricity from wind. Um, four states in Germany got over half their electricity from wind. Uh, Ireland uh, some days has enough wind to, to uh, run everything. Right. Um, so the, the point here is that 
what we used to think as sort of marginal, kind of interesting energy sources are now becoming mainstream. And, and that's the big change that's occurring. Right, and there are places like the southwest in the U.S. where solar might be the more dominant form. Yes. Um, in, in, the, in, in the U.S., in the southwestern United States, there are literally hundreds of utility-scale um, solar generating plants under construction or in the planning stages. And, and the reason is because there's a lot of sunlight there and you know hardly ever rains and clouds are few and far between. So you have a good source of, uh, of solar electricity. Um, so, so that's one of the, uh, the big developments. And, and with wind, um, we have an enormous amount of wind. I mean, the Great Plains. Kansas is the state that's really beginning to look at this through a commercial lens, and they want to export wind in every direction. Uh, they want to export it to the industrial Midwest. They want to ex export it down into the southeastern countries. I haven't done anything with, with wind yet. Um, so, so there's some enterprising things coming on. Texas wants to uh, export uh, uh, wind in, in, into Louisiana and Alabama. And would that take some upgrading of the electrical grid? It would take some upgrading, and in some cases an entirely new uh, transmission facility. Um, the good news is that we have new transmission lines now that are much more efficient than we've had before. I mean, probably twice as efficient. So you can think about moving electricity in much, uh, much longer directions. The other exciting thing about this is the is to see how much uh, private capital is is moving into this field. I mean, the billionaires, you know, Warren Buffett and Ted Turner and uh, Phil Anschutz. Phil Anschutz is a, a Denver billionaire who made his billions with coal and oil, mostly in Wyoming, and he is building a 3,000 megawatt wind complex in Wyoming and building a transmission line to take that to California. He happens to have an old railroad right away there, so he's just building the line through there. Um, but I mention these things just to give a sense of, of how they, I mean, Warren Buffett has invested, invested 15 billion, is, and, and in the last year or so has announced he's gonna invest 15 billion more. So the smart money is going in this area now. It's not going into oil and coal or anything. They won't. They don't even think about that. That was, you know, last century. Right. And once the money moves in, suddenly it stops being a political problem to support it, and there's a right. lot of incentive for the politicians right. Right. to be behind and, it. And it's also interesting that these private investors have huge sums of money to, you know, to play with, but it, but have those huge sums because they're smart investors and anticipate things. Um, they're also. Uh, setting the stage for Wall Street now to, you know, the Goldman Sachs of the world, the investment mm -hmm. banks in New York to move in uh, big time. Okay, great. Let me just switch topics somewhat, um, and because I know you've written a lot about food and water security and also the relationship to energy. So how will the, the energy transition affect um, basically agriculture and, and water resources? The, uh, the energy transition will not have uh, a major effect on agriculture um, because it's just a different source of energy, but you use it in the same way that we, we now do. Instead of having a diesel pump, pump you know, running your ir irrigation system, you'll have a, a solar-powered uh, uh, motor um, right. uh, doing the pumping. Um, the, big, the big thing in the food future mm -hmm is not land, it's water. We've got a lot of land in the world that can produce food if we had the water to go with it. So water is emerging as the principal constraint on efforts to expand world food production. The principal resource constraint, I should say. Right. But the, that's competing, the agriculture is competing with energy, like uh, nuclear energy uses a lot of water, um, fracking uses a lot of water, right? So. If we switch to renewables, you, you no longer have those competing uses of water. Is that fair to say? It is, and and it's an important point because uh, water is going to become increasingly tight in the world, which we're seeing in California, right, uh, and 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 in Sao Paulo and um, uh, west western uh, Brazil, in many places, yeah, and. Um, uh, 
water is now the principal constraint on efforts to expand food production. So anything that saves water, anything that's more water efficient is, is, is attractive. One of the attractions of wind and solar, solar energy is that they don't use any water at all, whereas coal or, or nuclear oil use a lot of, use a lot of water. So the, the, the availability, the tightening water supply is pushing the game uh, very much towards solar and wind and away from coal and nuclear. So just another reason why we need to move toward the renewable energy. That's right. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's been great to meet you, and uh, best of luck. Mm -hmm.